the Tour de France is littered with little unseen things that might have left you with some questions. Today, we're gonna go through the process of having a puncture. It's a little different from what happens when you or I puncture out on a leisurely ride. You certainly won't see the yellow jersey faffing around with an inner tube and cursing their mini pump. Right, let's get into it. Now, settle yourselves down because we're gonna go for story time. I've got a coffee, for instance. Our story begins near the front of the bunch. To keep things uh, a little less frantic, let's say there's 170 kilometers left in a 210 kilometer stage. It's gonna be a nothing day across central France. Three brave Frenchmen are out in front with an easily controllable gap, and you're just bobbing along near the front of the peloton, chatting to a mate. Yes, I have made you here a Tour de France rider. Mais non, something on this perfectly smooth Tour de France road has just punctured your rear tire. Thankfully, there is no stress. The peloton is moving slowly, and so you put your hand up like that, call the puncture through to your team car using your radio, and drift back through the bunch. By the time that you get to the back, the race director's car will have called your team car forward so you can keep riding on your flat tires. Um, tubulars are great for this, as are inserts in your tubeless tires. And then the team car will come up right behind you. And there we go. No, it's not Mariah Carey. It's the Shimano neutral service car or your team car carrying a very tired French, maybe Belgian mechanic, and an all-important spare wheel. Punctured wheel out, new wheel back in, and a little shove on your bony behind, and you're going again. So, your team is a forward-thinking bunch and has given you a setup that is tubeless. You've been told that it is much faster by the brand rep, and there's no way that you're going to puncture. And seeing as your mechanic has dealt with the setup, you can't see a reason not to love them. Ideally, you won't notice that a thorn has punctured your delicate race tire. You can ride all day blissfully ignorant of the fact that Tubeless has saved you a trip back to the team car. Finish the stage and a mechanic might notice while they wash the bike and change the tire. But ooh la la, what is this? Ah, oh, beep Tubeless, you scream. There is sealant all over your lovely white shoes and it's sprayed onto your legs too. Your tire is losing pressure and you make a note to have a word regarding false promises with that brand rep. What happens next depends largely on what's inside your tire. If it's a standard tuber setup with a hole that the sealant can't plug, you'll eventually get to a point where you're rolling on the rim. This is both uncomfortable and rather dangerous as there is very little holding the tire onto the rim. Seek a new wheel immediately and start praying if you're on a descent. If you've got a tubeless insert such as Vittoria's airliner inside the tire, then you'll bob down the road with what feels like roughly 20 psi in your tire. This isn't the best feeling, but the tire won't come off and you can just about corner without crashing. If your name starts with Matthew and ends with Vanderpol, you could probably still win the stage, but you'll want to get a new wheel from the team car sooner rather than later. It was a fast wheel change, and as you press on the pedals to get up to speed, you hear no problems. The gears are working perfectly, and the brakes, be that rim brake or disc, are not rubbing. Kindly, a rival's team car drifts in front of you and paces you back towards the peloton. The situation is so stress-free that you might even wait for your team car to come up to the peloton to give you a fresh bottle, a few gels, and some crucial tactical advice like remember to eat and drink. You move through the bunch, find your mate, and resume your chat about current affairs. But sometimes it is just one of those days. As you push on the pedals, something isn't quite right. Is that a disc rotor rubbing? Are your gears jumping? As the team car pulls alongside you, the problem is described with great technical detail, usually along the lines of, my gears are feet. We'll pause our story here for just a moment. With more cogs on the rear wheels and the rather tight gap between a disc rotor and the brake pads, a substitute part will often be misaligned. Some teams appear to be working to address this with Quickstep Alpha Vinyl, reportedly being given wheels from sponsor Rovolt with extra tight hub spacing tolerances in an effort to get their fleet of wheels absolutely identical. Anyway, back to our story. If the gears are not quite right, then chances are that the mechanic can fix them while leaning out of the car window at 40 kilometers per hour. 
Should the disc rotor be rubbing badly, then it's time to switch bikes. Luckily, you've got £10,000 worth of spare bikes sitting on the roof of the car, so you take that and get drafted back to the peloton with some new bottles. You ride the remainder of the race easily, and a sprinter probably wins the stage. The story might be over for you, but it isn't for your wheel. If you've got a spare wheel from your team, then it simply travels back to the finish with them before being put in the mechanics truck to have the tyre changed. If the Shimano neutral service car helped you out with a wheel, then they will hold on to the wheel until the finish before going around the teams to give wheels back. For you and I, losing a grand's worth of wheel would be a sickening feeling. While the pro teams don't pay a lot for their kit, they're not blasé about it either. Should you ever find yourself accidentally in possession of a pro team's wheel, they'd probably like it back and we'll exchange that £1,000 wheel for a £5 cap and maybe, if you're lucky, a bottle too. Your wheel has made it safely back to the team, but it's the end of the road for your poor tyre. Pro teams used to almost exclusively use tubular tyres for racing and once they were punctured, they were binned. If it is in good condition and even a coat of glue should be all that is needed before a new tubular is installed. Otherwise, the rim bed is stripped back to the bare carbon before fresh glue layers are applied. Generally, the work of gluing happens on rest days, although some teams have such a huge stock of wheels ready to go that they're really just keeping that stock topped up. In terms of tubeless, well, they just replace the tyre. Surely is an easier system for the mechanics. The rest day for the riders is a chance to take a break from racing. We fans usually use it as a day to actually get some work done instead of being distracted by yet another chateau and ITV4 get busy breaking out the montages. For a Tour de France mechanic, there isn't really a rest day. Bikes, team vehicles and clothing all need washing. And of course, all of those tires need replacing. And so ends our surprisingly long story of what happens when you puncture in the Tour de France. Remember, show this to your kids at bedtime if you want them to be asleep in seconds. Well, if you enjoyed this story, remember to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.